the next talk is about optimal structure preserving signatures in asymmetric bilinear groups. It's given by Masayuki Abe, Jens Gross, Christian Haralembiev, and uh, Miyako Okubo. Jens will give a talk. Thank you. Okay, so this is about uh, structure preserving signatures which is a special type of pairing-based uh, signature schemes. Um, I want to start, start by talking about structure preservation, okay? Which is something that we are already very familiar with in cryptography, right? I mean, if you think about a mathematical structure, such as, for instance, a finite cyclic group, it's proven to be extremely helpful in constructing cryptographic protocols, right? So we have things such as el -Gamal encryption, Peterson commitments, Schnorr proofs, and so forth, okay? And, and there may be more st structure preservation going on here, right? If you think of el -Gamal encryption, it encrypts messages which are basically the plain text are elements of this finite cyclic group, right? And if you multiply two cipher text, then you get a product of the plain text. So you also preserve the group operation in el -Gamal encryption. If we have more mathematical structure, we could do more things, okay? So one example of that would be pair from pairing-based cryptography, where now we have three cyclic groups and some bilinear map. The map take pairs of elements from the two base groups and map it into the target group. And now we can do more things now. We can do identity-based encryption. We can do short digital signatures. We can do non-interactive zero-knowledge proofs and so forth, right? So, so the notion of structure preservation, the idea is that you have all these mathematical structures and they're really useful for doing cryptography. And, and you could hope also that the more structure you preserve in your schemes, the easier it is to put them together and build more complex schemes in a modular manner. Um, and, and there are actually quite a few papers saying something with structure preservation, structure preserving signatures, structure preserving commitments, structure preserving encryption, and, and so forth. Okay, so um, let me get more precise about this so let me first uh, state what is a bilinear group, which is the structure we are looking at in this paper, right? So you have some generation algorithm that outputs description of a prime P and three groups of prime order P which are generated by some generator G and H. And then you have this bilinear map that takes elements from the two base groups and map it into the target group. Um, there are different types of bilinear groups depending on whether you have maps between the two base groups, right? So there are type one groups where you have an efficiently computable isomorphism between G and H. Then you have type two groups where you have an efficient computable homomorphism from H to G, but not the other way around. And then you have the type three groups where you don't know any efficient computable homomorphism from G to H or from H to G. Uh, and we're going to look at, at the third type of uh, bilinear groups, um, but our results also do apply for, for the other two types of groups, we believe. Okay, so a structure preserving signature will define in the following way. Uh, first of all, everything has to be group elements and it has to live in the base group, okay? So the public key consists of group elements in the base groups. Con the messages are group elements in the base groups. Um, and the signatures are group elements in the base groups. And the second property we want is that the verify only has to verify, evaluate some pairing product equations. So these are equations where you basically, you take pairings of group elements, multiply them together and, and see what that gets, okay? Finally, we'll need one more property. We're going to look at signature schemes where the signer only uses generic group operations, okay? So it can take group elements, it can multiply them together, raise them to some exponents and so forth but it wouldn't look at specifically at the bit structure of, of some, some group element. 
okay? And, and the consequence of the signer only using generic group operations as well, then we know that the signature will be on this form that you take, I don't know, some message element, raise them to some exponent, you have some other, of the other group elements from the public key and so forth and raise them to some, some exponents. Okay. So, so as I already hinted at, right, I mean, the idea with structure preserving signatures is that they can compose really well with other pairing based schemes, okay? So because the signatures are all group elements, it would be very easy to do LGML encryption and encrypt these group elements. Because the verification equation, the pairing product equation, it would be very easy, use, easy to apply non-interactive zero knowledge techniques and prove that you have some signature that verifies correctly, even without revealing that signature. And there are several applications of structure preserving signatures because now you can in modular manner construct a lot of different things, group signatures, blind signatures, lots of other protocols. Okay. So, so now I'll get to, to the results, what this paper uh, tells us about structure preserving signatures. And what we have is a lower bound, which says that a structure preserving signature with a generic signing algorithm has to consist of at least three group elements. Okay? And then we also have a construction which actually uses exactly three group elements. So some, an optimal structure preserving signature scheme. And I'm going to start with the lower bound. Um, so I want to show that uh, we have, if you have a structure preserving signature scheme with a generic signer, then the signatures have to consist of at least three group elements. Okay. And, and the proof of this is going to really use the structure preservation in an essential way. It's going to use the fact that the signer only uses generic group operations. So, um, and, and well, obviously you'll have to use these kind of properties, right? Because we already have examples of shorter signatures, okay? But these examples of shorter signatures, well, they reveal some exponents. Maybe they use a hash function. The hash function is really good at destroying signature structure, right? It's structure destroying, you could say, okay? Um, and, and also, well, we really need to, to use the, the generic group model. Um, I want to note that um, typically when you use the generic group model, the most common usage of it has to prove, been to prove that, well, there's some assumption that cannot be broken by a generic group algorithm, and therefore, well, we have some reason to believe in, in that assumption, right? Here, it's a, a, a bit different. Here, I'm saying, hey, the, the algorithm that we're using in the scheme has to be generic, right? And if somebody wants to come up and, and beat our lower bound, then maybe they'll have to go out and come up with some pairing-based signature scheme where you use non-generic group operations. Um, Okay, so, so I'll try to sketch the idea behind this proof of the, of the lower bound, okay? First of all, I'll, without loss of generality, we can just look at signatures for one group element, right? Because if you can sign very long messages, then you could also always just concatenate with some ones and, and sign one group element. So, so I'll just give a lower bound for, for, let's say, a single message that belongs to G, okay? And we're going to have three theorems. Okay, one which says that you cannot have unilateral structure-preserving signatures. So the structure-preserving signature consists of some group elements, and we're saying that it can't be that all the elements on G or all the elements of the signature on in H. Okay, you have to have some kind of mix from G and H of group elements. Um, and that rules out one element group signatures, right, because uh, signatures because, well, either the group element would be in G or it would be in H and therefore it would be unilateral. And it also rules out that we have two group elements in G, two group elements in H. So the remaining difficult case is where we have, um, well, a signature that is on, on the form S and T where they, one of them belongs to G and the other element belongs to H. Um, and we're going to show that that's impossible, and, and along the way, we'll 
use the fact that it's impossible to have a single verification equation. So that's another lower bound. A structure preserving signature scheme, you need to have at least two or, or more verification equations. Okay, so, so let me first look at, at a really simple case, okay? And say, show that there's no single group element signature, where, uh, no single element structure preserving signature where the element belongs to G, okay? And, and the proof goes like this. Um, so without loss of generality, we can write the verification equations like this, where you could imagine B and, and W and Z are derived from, from the public verification key. Okay, and if we have two signatures and two different randomly chosen messages that satisfy this equation, you can simply take a linear combination of those and you have a new signature on a new message. All right, so this is very straightforward linear algebra to show that uh, that, that approach doesn't work. Right? And, and it generalizes very easily that even if you have many elements from G, they still cannot perform be a, a structure preserving signature. Okay, so then let's look at another case. What if we have just elements in H? So suppose, for instance, we have a single group element signature in H. Um, and here we use the fact that it's a generic signer, right? What can a generic signer do? It's not really allowed to look at the, the bit structure of the message, it will just do group operations. But the message, the message belongs to G, right? And it's trying to come up with some signature in H. So basically it, has, it will have to choose the signature independently of the message. And well, if you choose the signature independently of the message, either it's not a good signature for all messages or it's a good signature for all messages. So you can't have that. And, and that also generalizes straightforwardly to many elements from, from H cannot be a signature on, on a message. So now we've ruled out the unilateral cases, right? And the, the remaining question is, can you somehow create a structure for serving signature where you have one group element from G and one group element from H? Um, and to prove that, uh, we'll need first a, a theorem to help us a little, which says that there's no structure preserving signature which has just a single verification equation. And I'm not going to, to prove that, but basically the strategy for proving it is that you look at the most general public key you can think of. So you have some elements U that belong to G, some elements V that belong to, to H. You come up with the most general way you could imagine a verification equation looks like. And you do a lot of linear algebra and you show that it's possible to forge. Okay, so, so remaining is, is this question, can we find some kind of two group element structure preserving signature on, on some message in, in G? Um, and the strategy is, well, we already know that it cannot be unilateral. So the only possible option for a structure preserving signature would be one that has one element in, in G and one element in H. Um, and we know that it's a generic signer, so we can actually re write the signature on this form here. Right? Because it only uses the generic group operations to create the signature. Of course, alpha and, and beta and tau can have all sorts of complicated relationships with each other, but, but it has to be in this form. Okay? And, and what we will show is that when the signature is on this form, actually, even if you have many verification equations, they are all linearly related in some way, and they all collapse to just a single verification equation. And that was impossible, so therefore, you cannot have this two group, two group element signature. Okay, so I'll try to sketch how that goes. Okay. So without loss of generality, you can write the verification equation on, on this form. Doesn't matter so much uh, what all these components are. Um, you can take discrete logarithms of those and, and use the fact that the map is bilinear and then you'll get 
this type of equation for the exponents, these elements. Now you can use the fact that it's a generic signer that generates S like this and T like this. So you can simply plot that into the verification equation. And look here, you have kind of, you have some component here which gets multiplied by whatever the discrete logarithm is of the message. And then you have some other component that independent of the message, right? And it's a generic signer. So the signer has, doesn't actually look at the message and, and doesn't try to compute the discrete logarithm or anything like that. So you can conclude that if the signature scheme is to be correct, then this equation here, the first part has to be zero, and this second part has to match up as well. Okay, so each verification equation gives rise to these two pair, pair this pair of equalities. Okay, so now we have, okay, we have possibly many verification equations, and all of them give some, some pair of, of equalities, right? And then you do some linear algebra in this, and you show that they're all linearly related. Okay? So they're all equivalent to just one single verification equation. You might as well have used just a single verification equation. And that we ruled out, and we can therefore conclude that it's not possible to have a structure preserving signature scheme consisting of just two group elements. Okay, so that was the lower bound. Now we know that we have to use at least three group elements to have a structure preserving signature. And we know that we have to use at least two verification equations to have a structure preserving signature scheme. Okay, and now we actually have a construction that does that, okay? So the messages, and now we try to generalize as much as we can, right? So we say we have some messages that can consist of some number of elements in G, some number of elements in H. We'll have some public key, which is slightly larger than, than the messages that we're trying to sign. Okay, and the signing key will just be the discrete logarithms of all these values in the public key. And signatures consist of three group elements, which are computed like this. Okay, and verification is done by checking these two pairing product equations. Okay, so I want to highlight here, right, that the messages can be really large, but even so, you still just have short signatures. The signatures are just three group elements. Okay, so this is optimal, okay? The signature size is three group elements. The verification equation uses just two pairing product equations. Uh, and this signature scheme, well, it has the best kind of security we could imagine, right? We, it's strongly existential and unforgeable on the adaptive chosen message attack. Um, and it's proven secure in the generic group model. So we don't have a nice reason to believe that it's, it's secure. It is a, a generic group model proof. Okay. Um, some further results. So, so one thing I want to, to highlight is that it is actually possible to do one-time signatures that beat all these lower bounds, okay? So we actually have a one-time signature scheme for, for unilateral messages where the signature scheme is unilateral. It's only two group elements and it only has a single verification equation, okay? And, and well, the underlying reason is that in all these proofs here, the attacks we have require two random messages attack, okay? So, so we don't have two, so for two-time signatures, all our lower bounds hold, but not for one-time signatures. Um, another question you, you might ask is, can we build structure-preserving signatures on, on non-interactive assumptions, right? Something that's better than, than just using the generic group model to argue that something is secure. Um, so, and, and we actually have constructions which require four group elements for unilateral messages and six group elements for bilateral messages. Um, and we have some, some, some work which is, is going to appear at Asiacrypt which actually indicates that you can't build three group element st structure preserving signatures 
based on non-interactive assumptions. So kind of we're forced to use the generator group model for this three-element three uh, construction. But then if we, are, we want to have non-interactive assumptions, well, we can do it with four group elements. Um, and finally, I want to, to, to highlight that, well, so the signature scheme we constructed here is, is one which is strongly existential and forgeable. Sometimes it's actually useful to have quite the opposite property that you can randomize the signature scheme. Okay? And, and we also have a construction for that, which is three group elements, but, but it only works for unilateral messages and still open problem to come up with one that, that works for bilateral messages. Okay, so, so to summarize, we now have, have a lower bound of at least three group elements for a structure preserving signature scheme, right? At least two verification equations, and we actually have a construction that gives us exactly that. Thank you. Uh, we have no time for uh, questions, so let's